was another job ticked off the list. Welcome back to another Sean's World video. Now it was one of those niggly little jobs that you keep putting off, but it was leaking. It was a plumbing issue once again, in a different room this time, in the toilet. It's been fine for 12 years. And all of a sudden, a little patch on the floor. So I've been turning the valve off, uh, and then turn it back on. So anyway, finally done it. Only a little washer. Right, where do I begin? Well, for a start, We've managed to sort the walls out. They're structurally sound now. Just a little bit of pointing to do inside the chimney void. But basically, this whole flank is now solid. Now, one of the upcoming projects will be the installation of the wood burner. It's that box there. Now, I purchased this a little while ago. It was on offer, so I grabbed it while I could. So yeah, we've got that ready to go. All I need now to go with it is the flue liner. So the fluid liner that I use is a stainless steel flexible one. It just simply connects into a solid pipe out of the wood burner. And then we go up to the top where the chimney stack finishes. You put a round clamp. I think I might have one somewhere anyway. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but yeah, then the cap goes over the top and then you make good all around it. So that's got to be done. Then you talk in the register plate, which is the solid insulation plate that goes underneath here that's got to be installed once we get all that work done we're going to point this lovely half clean all the stones up at the moment it looks a real mess Look, there's a reason why i haven't done anything to this yet because i'm still working above so don't want to damage it it will all wire brush up and point up absolutely perfectly so we're in the chimney void now so i've been working up there filling in those gaps now they've been made solid from the other side which is which is good no structurally they're okay come around here i've got that timber and we've got some more well what was damage up there now being rectified now the register plate that's the bottom of the beam here will come up to about here all the way around to the top of these cantilever timbers and then you'll have the solid flue pass through the register plate and connect to the flexible above and then out through the top so once i've ordered the flex i'll go and pick it up come back once we've got a nice few days we'll get the wood burner installed flex up chimney pot on top and all rendered and made good around there so that'd be another job off the list. So I'm back upstairs now. Now the next job up here will be to fit another Velux window, just there. Now I did originally plan to fit another window opposite the one I'm about to fit here. So this half will be what will be the bedroom. Do I put one in there? Will it be too light? Not quite sure about that yet. So where the scaffolding is, is in the bedroom section. Come past that A-frame, we're now in the other half, which will be the bathroom. Now there will be a small window going in there. Definitely need it in the bathroom for ventilation. And then once the window's fitted in, we can move on to the insulation. At that stage, I'll probably start running some ducting through for the cables, for the electrics. And then after that, I've got to start thinking about plumbing. Yep. We're up in the bathroom, so we're talking soil pipes, water feeds up here. So yeah, that'll be another another good job to get done. Yeah, be quite busy up here soon. Petition walls, and then we come to this side of the wall. This was originally all covered with clay. There was a huge amount of weight up there. Took it all down, made a bit of a mess, but it was well worth it. Now. That will look absolutely beautiful once it's all wire brushed up and a little coat of something to bring out the natural beauty but i definitely don't want to close it off with a partition so all the insulation will be done behind that plasterboard in you know 
insulation will be done the other side so we will see the beauty of this natural wood now if you look through there now this is the barn with the major issue with the roof now that will be addressed very very shortly and I've said it in the past but you know to wait for the weather finances and things like that and extra help so that will be tackled soon also lots of exciting things to come now sometimes the building speaks to you and tells you you know the best way to do things yeah especially this one it throws up the odd repair seems like every single job but it's part of the territory with these old places they're made of wood wood rocks you know if it gets wet over the years it will deteriorate but we're definitely over the worst of that now. Don't think there's any more horrors that I can find, although you never know. We haven't peeled back everything, but structurally, I think I've saved it in time. Well, I know I have. So yes, the roof is slowly deteriorating. We're losing tiles. It's mainly down to the clips, although the, the tiles are wearing rather thin. It does need doing. Now that dormer needs some major work doing to it also. So I dare say that will throw up a few surprises. Now the front of the house, which is this wall here, will all be rendered, lime rendered. And then over the top of that, there'll be some insulation and there'll be a stud work wall. Now I don't want to just go with a plasterboard wall. I'm not quite sure how or what I'm going to do yet, but I want it to look authentic, but at the same time, provide the necessary insulation that these places need, you know, for modern day living. It is an external wall and it needs to be made warm so a little bit of a challenge there I've got a few ideas it certainly won't look like a plasterboard wall that's for sure and this is the other side same again that'll be rendered partition and some insulation now this is technically an inside wall because the other side of that is the cottage the end cottage so I'm not going to insulate that after all that hard work that is staying as is so we spoke about this, I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to do, but for now I'm not going to do anything. And then that side is staying as is. So that's the rear wall of the property. Now this has got a clay render on it, blown in places. Now what I'll do, I'll take off all the blown areas, and if it's blown all the way across, then I'll take it all off. That'll also have to be rendered. But after that it will be tanked so there's no moisture coming through there because the rear of the property is slightly buried at the back we'll talk about that in a little while so that needs to be tanked off we can't have any moisture ingress from the rear of the property then we come to the dividing wall between the cottage and the barn one that needs the roof doing to it now that wall was rather a large challenge if you go back a few videos You'll see the amount of work that had to take place the other side of there before I could even start in this cottage really. So at the moment we're on the cottage side of the wall. This is the making good I've done on the inside here. But a vast amount of work was carried out on the other side. Let me show you what I mean. Sam's busy behind the scenes as usual. Making the garden look nice for spring. Hello dear. Now we're on the other side of the wall in the barn and there I had to build a solid limecrete retaining wall then I had to rebuild all this in stone reinforce it with some timbers build a stone column there there was lots of work to be done here but I've secured it all yeah and that allowed me to continue in the cottage but this was the real turning point once I sorted this side out the ground level if we was in the cottage now would be about there thereabouts so this is like a, a footing if you like a retainer to support this side of the cottage really I do plan to extend it although it's not as urgent from the halfway point to the back but that area is okay for now. Once I start work in the barn 
all this will be coming down there's hay above this it's been up there for years it's got to come down it's not a very nice job but it needs doing we'll open this right up and put a new floor in the beams are looking okay he says fingers crossed yeah this is going to be a great great building this one much bigger than the cottage I'll we'll probably section this off not quite sure yet when I say section it off I mean one part of it might be a workshop one might be just a chill out zone you know a little bit more sort of casual and up the top who knows did think about putting a gym in here hello oh dear what are you doing Mind your own business. Oh, charming. I only asked. No, that's what the plant's called. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what you're planting, is it? Yeah. That'd it's be nice. a good ground cover. Yeah, it spreads. And uh, yeah, it's very pot bound, so I'm just breaking it up into three clumps and hoping it will fill up the gaps between the stones here. I'm sure it will. I can hear a lot of buzzing behind you, but I think it's the bumblebees in the willow tree. Yeah, it's one of the first sources of um, nectar for them. I've also got an exciting update. Sam is working on a really, really good blog, haven't you, Sam? Yes, got some exciting news for you. Mm. You'll have to look at the blog to find out what it is. So will I, I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, check out the blog, welcome to Sean'sWorld.com. She's doing some amazing stuff on there, writing some really, really good blogs. So we're now around the back of the barns and the cottages. Yeah, there's been lots of work done here. Still more to do though. That's the chimney stack in the cottage. And where the gutter changes height, that is the end of the cottage here. So we're looking at this section here and into the edge of that gutter there. Now that section of the wall really, really does need urgent attention. See that is the beauty of doing these videos, you have a recap. Some things, you know, slip your mind and maybe something a little bit smaller. Okay, yeah. It's quite depth, isn't it? It's cleaning up. It's clay infill and it just washes it away. So I started repairing it. Something else comes along as equally, if not more important, you get sidetracked. So yeah. Well, this has just worked its way to the top of the list. I mean, at first glance, it does look bad. You know, it's not good, don't get me wrong. But you've got to bear in mind how thick these walls are. You know, they really are really thick, so what seems like, you know, in a conventional house, a real problem. Something like this, it's not too bad. It can be dealt with. Now, we will be connecting up to what they call a Fosseptique. Now, that'll be done via a 4-inch, 100mm pipe, soil pipe. Now, I've got two options, really. I can either come out with the soil pipe upstairs in the bathroom, drop down, and then pick up out of the kitchen with a 40mm pipe no soil pipe needed down there there's no toilet downstairs only upstairs so continue to it that way probably have to put some pilot drills through to see whereabouts I'm coming out probably looking around about this sort of height for upstairs believe it or not the floor upstairs so yeah I'll have to figure out what's going on with the heights for the kitchen I think I worked it out it's quite low but it's above the ground level in the membrane and then I've got to work out the fall from here down to our vertical soil stack that we've got to tee into. Let's have a look at that. Now this is the vertical soil pipe of our kitchen. So we'll branch into that and that way we'll be fully connected. Now in a previous video when I put this membrane down we dug right the way down. We run a water pipe, water main right the way through this trench here all the way down and round and then into the cottage now lots of you when I've done that video commented why didn't you run a water main into all of them like the last three well what I'm doing I've run it into the cottage now out of the cottage on the inside I'm going to tee off 
and go either side so it saved me a having any more pipe than I need to outside and it's much easier inside just put a T just run it each side done you know isolation valves not a problem so once I've done all the remedial works with filling the holes pointing I'll either render it or clad clad this section not quite sure yet it would also be nice to get this membraned and graveled. Stop it turning into a quagmire. Still got to deal with this bank. I think I'm going to put some membrane over that just to kill those brambles off. And then address that at a later date. But it isn't going anywhere. It's been like this for 12 years. You know, the root system from the trees which are next to it binding it all together it's not collapsing or anything and if we take a look at the rear of my cottage this roof mm, this needs attention as well that will need to be addressed in the coming year or two now even though I've been here 12 years a lot of those years were you know working at other people's properties I had to work for a living so a lot of this did take sort of back seat but now I'm in a position where I can share it with you, work on it all the time and rescue it. Still lots to do though. Now I can just see on that chimney stack there is just a little bit that I couldn't reach on the corner. There's a slight little crack there. You can bet your bottom dollar they'll try and get in there. So I do need to get up there again. This is the beautiful organic orchard view from our window. Yeah, it's a nice way to wake up in the morning. You know, you do have to remind yourself about that. Sometimes just have a look around, you know, work out why you're doing what you're doing. It's hard work with these projects, you know. Don't be fooled otherwise. It's not for the faint hearted, but it's well worth it, you know. It's nice to save properties, you know, from falling down. You see so many of them out here just, just collapsing. All that history and character gone. That's what I'm trying to do, is just save them, you know, stop them collapsing, pass them down to the next generation so we can we can all enjoy them. Yeah, and the more I look, the more holes I can see in the wall now. Now this is the end cottage, this is a, a fantastic property. Not really been over this much to be honest with you. I know lots of you say, oh, you haven't been in there for 12 years. No, I haven't, I haven't been up upstairs, still haven't now because it's dangerous, you know, it could collapse at any moment. Now, lots of YouTubers will claim that things are nearly falling down, but let me tell you, this really is nearly falling down. But uh, yeah, we'll rescue it. It's what's causing a lot of the problems in the cottage. It's just this area here. Yes, I've got a few slip tiles there. Yeah, that's where the water ingress was coming into the cottage there. So I do need to get up there and address that. I'll take you around the front of this end cottage. You can see exactly how bad the roof damage is. That's the neighbour's little dog. Kindly comes and deposits certain things in our vegetable patches. Yeah, go on. So I'm not sure whether the camera is picking it up, but just to the left of the stack, you can see there is an enormous gap. Now the purlin, which is the big centre left to right beam, has snapped in this, this end cottage. I know about it. Not much I can do about it at the moment. But this will be an absolutely fantastic place once I start work on this one. Something about this one I really do like. I've also got to extend a little mini terrace across to the end. That'll be done shortly. Tidy that area up just to match it all in with everything else. This end lean-to will also be coming down definitely this year. Um, used to store wood in there but we've relocated that now so that's a bit of an eyesore. Although it's been very useful storage over the years. Then we'll be left with a nice little area here. Might put a parking spot here, might do something else with it, maybe a little end terrace, be rather nice. The sun sets over this side, so yeah. Okay, now it's time to go and see what Tom's been doing in the greenhouse. 
he's been working his magic. I had a little look in there earlier on. Everything he's planted has come up from seed, which is pretty good, considering it's not a heated greenhouse. Right, let's go and have a look, see whether he's at home. You haven't seen my hand trial, have you, Dad? Uh, probably somewhere. <laughs> right, what have you been up to inside? All sorts. Uh, well, let's start outside, eh? Um, yeah, sure. So, this raised bed we've got here, um, the plan is, basically, um, to put about eight to ten tomato plants in it this year and try to grow the tomatoes outside. Yeah. Um, they're not going to be ready to go into the, the ground yet. Um, that's probably about two months time, so probably mid-May, once the uh, soil temperature's um, warm enough and once they've hardened off and grown, so they, they can basically survive the change of acclimatization, if you like. So in the meanwhile, um, I've stuck some beetroot seeds in this side, and we've got some spinach that side. Okay, what have we got going down the centre? Uh, going down the middle, there's going to be garlic. Nice. Um, and these are good uh, uh, companion plants with yeah, tomatoes. Yeah, companion planting, yep. yeah. So basically, um, the garlic will um, help repel a lot of the pests that do, um, you know, come Damage, yeah. bo bother your tomato plants. So, um, so yeah, they're probably going to stay in for the full season. So it's really easy with garlic. You just basically get your bulb, break them down into little cloves, you keep the skin on and you pop it sort of um, anywhere from basically the top of the, the clove sticking up yeah. to um, one depth of the clove. You don't want to go too much deeper. No. And it needs to be in well drained soil. Um, okay. This way it's basically going to guarantee that the bulb, because that one single clove will become a whole bulb. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's the magic of growing garlic. And you can basically do it with any store bought. Yeah, I think organic is better because oh, yeah, there's no yeah. uh, retardant spray on it to stop them sprouting. Yeah, I think. there's other ways you can you can get around that. Um, for example, you can um, put it in a twice brewed tea bag of chamomile tea. Yeah, and make sure it's not boiling, of course, but nice and warm. And basically, that helps um, sort of unroll the um, oh the, the spray or the coat the yeah. yeah, so you can do it with several seeds actually, and um, you know even even seeds that aren't from store bought vegetables yeah. it works all right um yeah brilliant little tip there for you yeah uh so basically the science pine is it, it sort of mimics the um stomach acidity of birds which obviously if you've oh, got right, a berry yeah. eat or, it. or something yeah the bird will land it will eat the berry okay. and then obviously it's digested and you know it grows up the other side definitely um, so yeah, that's the science behind that one. So good little tip there. Um, so in these two boxes, we've got carrots. Brilliant, a lot of carrot. So with carrots, what you need to make sure of is you've got a very fine soil. Yeah, well drained, isn't it? Well drained, so there's you know anywhere up to half sand, half probably topsoil, okay. compost. Um, if you do get um, sort of the bag to soil, not this stuff, it's pig moss, that's horse manure. But if you get the um, potting soil, make sure to sieve it okay so Give it's it nice and sift. fine so it's nice and fine yeah and um so basically when the carrot root grows it's not going to hit any obstacles and, and fork and that as well yeah, and fork. It? yeah. you don't want to carrot that forks that's 100 no and, and also it's worth mentioning that you you sow the seeds successionally so you you sow some leave it a couple of weeks then sow some more yeah so, that so when they come you don't get a glut yeah, of it yeah you get a continual yeah. crop of carrots that's great right so we have a look inside that greenhouse yeah. Right, after you mate. Okay, yeah, a little bit of tidying up. I need to yeah, you've sort of caught me in the middle of That's right. wow. moving everything around. This. So what we got from this so, yeah, end? I'll talk you through it. So um, here obviously we have lettuce, these are just store-bought ones. They've grown quite a lot actually in about three weeks I believe. Yeah. Um, so here actually, make sure the camera's focused should be able to see the beginnings of some little shoes. Yeah, little green shoes. And yeah. that's red cabbage. Okay. Um, so in this bed, we have beetroot seeds, we have some garlic, that's all we have. Um, we started the garlic cloves off in some shallow water and they already started to sprout and then, you know, they've kind of um, run away since they've been planted in. So we've got a lot of growth there in a very short period of time. And there's a couple of onions around so the edge as well. these um, rather tall seedlings are rocket or arugula. I think it's called in, in the United States. Um, so these were sown about two or three weeks ago and they've come up really well. Um, very short germination time to, to get into a seedling. Um, they're a bit leggy because they've been watered. Um, I've been in the process of uh, gradually thinning them out 
So basically, um, you know, you, you grow them in rows like that and just sprinkle the seeds in um, to assure that you're gonna get, because obviously you do lose out on some seeds that, you know, don't germinate, uh, some seeds get eaten. So to basically, um, you know, edge your bits, you put mini seeds in and then you sort of- Thin them out Thin them out as you go, yeah. So here we have some um, curly leaf parsley from last year. I'm not sure if Americans call parsley something else. I don't know the word. And here we have coriander in these two. There's coriander in there. And on this final sort of section, um, there's spinach. So I sold some seeds, I think it was about sort of two, two weeks ago and um, they didn't sprout, they didn't germinate. So what I've done today is I've put some um, new seed down from a different packet. What I think may have happened is um, the seeds from the other packet weren't stored correctly. Uh, maybe there was um, too cold uh, left outside over the winter. And I think, yeah, so that, that's what's happened there. Um, so it's important to um, you know, s safely store your seed. So just make sure they're in date. This is the variety that we've gone for. Matador. So this side we have some bok choy. As you can see, uh, the seedlings are just starting to sprout through. Coming up here. Yeah, definitely. Very exciting stuff. Um, here's some chives that have been transplanted from elsewhere in the garden. Um, they will bush up and, and you know grow um, more ruggedly shortly. Here there's some onions. There's also some onions um, in the corners here. Um, so that's, once again, companion planting. Um, the onions will help repel the pests that eat. Yeah, anything sort of strong yes. it, onions. Marigolds as well, you mentioned, mm -hmm. going in yeah, there as well. Yeah, it depends. You know, so, some things work better with others. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, last year, the bok choy was planted outside and it got absolutely uh, ravished by pests, a certain type of weevil. So in this year, I'm, I'm trying them inside. And these are great sort of in stir fries, in salads, that sort of thing. So it's a really versatile green and very healthy. Um, so yeah, this side, um, yeah, we've got some um, strawberries. Um, these are Charlotte variety. They're ever bearing, so that basically means they're going to give fruit throughout the year. Um, yeah, um, when you plant um, strawberry plants, it's important to keep the crown above the ground. Yeah, because if they you, rot otherwise. They rot otherwise, and if it's too high above the ground, um, the plants can become weak. So it's really important get the um, depth to right. get the depth right with yeah. strawberries. I've put some chicken um, poo pellets underneath the roots. Um, I wonder what that food. fragrant smell was. Yeah, we don't smell of strawberries yet, does it? <laughs> Not yet. Okay, very, very good. Right, what we got down the end here? Yeah, so down the end, some pots that I'm trying outside. I'm trying uh, many different seeds inside as well. Um, well, they tomatoes. So yeah, these three pots here um, contain tomato seedlings. They were started off inside about a month ago. Here we have some courgette seeds that are newly planted. Yep. And here is some onion seeds um, because we've, we're have growing them from sets as well. And these are some seeds that I'm trying out. Okay, Tom, I can see we're in safe hands, mate. Thanks for the tour. Yeah, you're very welcome. Um, uh, yeah, I love doing some gardening when I'm here, so. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, great. Right. We'll have a little wander outside and yep. uh, talk about. I've got about. some weeding to get getting on with. We've got lots yeah. of weed to be getting on with. I'm glad you're helping there. I've still got lots of hard landscaping to do. Now these are some nice tiles that I've laid yeah, some years ago in there. Probably too good to be outside but yeah I just wanted to give it that secret garden feel. This was an ancient door off of an old property that I used to own. Yep, it's lasting well. I've got a bit more work to do on this gravel path. What I'm doing is laying lots of paths to interconnect all the different areas of the garden. So there'll be another one coming down to here, into there. We've got the steps down into what we call the dell. Some beautiful flowers coming up down in there, actually. Probably won't get down here soon with the fox gloves. Look at this, this is done really, really well. Wow, I've never seen it this big before. Now the name has escaped me. Not had any peaches off this yet. Living hope. Okay. And that's the wood store there. 
and I did start to build a secret pathway to grow this area up. This goes up and around the other side of the pond. Another path down here into this area. Recently cut all this back, all the willow from here is what made that willow structure that I've been working on. A nice bench there. And this is the sunken garden. Now, a few years ago, before I'd done all the alterations, this used to flood. It used to come up to there. But with some careful planting and landscaping, the insulation of that pond, it no longer floods. These actually are off a, a cider press. That's a little arch there with a that's one half. The other half is under here somewhere. And on either side of the vertical pole that clamped and squeezed the apples and pears. So we then come out of the dell. And into the little mini orchard. We've got pear, plum, cherry, peach, and we've got almond. That's really doing well. This is beautiful quince. Yeah, that's doing really well. And just over in the far corner is our little shack. We've got a little project going on there and will be revealed at a later date. So across from there as you already know if you haven't checked the video out it's quite a good one construction this willow structure we've still got you know lots to do on this little area but it's certainly taking shape now we had quite a storm the other day and I did forget to tie these off at the bottom and they fared up okay, didn't blow away. So hopefully that little mini tour will give you, you know, a kind of schedule of what's coming up soon. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to portray, you know, what your plans are without just stopping and having a look around and explaining things through properly. You know, every time you see me inside the cottage and I'm working, that's the video and you go off and you see another one. Sometimes you can lose track of you know, where we're heading with it, but that's the direction. There's lots of jobs to do outside. There's maintenance on my house, cottage, whatever you want to call it. The actual cottage that I'm renovating, that's ongoing. There's lots of you know real big projects coming up on that one. So yeah, it just evolves. If you want to take part in supporting the channel, it can be done through various channels like Patreon, buy me a coffee, watch the ads, watch the video, like, share, all that stuff really does help. And then uh, that way I can continue bringing these lovely videos to you. So that is it for this video. I'll see you back in the next one. Bye for now.